Hi, um, today I'm at the hospital waiting for patients in labor. So I wanted to come and talk to you kind of about what to expect when you come in labor and how that labor may look if you're planning to deliver at the hospital. Um, so when you come to the hospital, and we talked a little bit in a different video about when would be the time to come to the hospital. But when you get here, usually we wanna confirm or diagnose the reason you're coming and that it is labor. So sometimes you'll be seen in a triage area and we'll check your cervix and make sure that it's changed from the last time you were checked or we may watch you in triage for an hour or two um, checking your cervix once when you come in and once after it's been long enough to see your cervix change with contractions. Um, if you come in and you're already many centimeters dilated, say you present at five or six centimeters, you're uncomfortable, you're contracting, then that process often does not need to happen. Um, sometimes you're coming in because your water broke, which also is a labor um, admission ticket. So sometimes we'll do a test or an exam to confirm that. Once we're for sure, okay, you're in labor, it'll look different at different hospitals. I work at a small community hospital, so I don't have residents. Um, I do have an occasional medical student, but it's mostly me and the bedside nurse who are going to be hands-on with you. We also have um, a tech who comes in and helps in labor, and sometimes you see the charge nurse or administrative staff, but mostly you'll see um, your doctor or midwife and your bedside nurse. Um, after you're admitted, we'll do an admission. We usually have, almost always have your chart from the office and we confirm any medical information. We may ask questions on admission about plans for baby, things like breastfeeding, who you'll see for a pediatrician. Um, if you're having a boy, you'll probably get asked if you're going to have a circumcision. Um, so you'll have those questions that you get answered. And of course, we want to make sure we order any medications you're on that you need to get continue and document any allergies so we don't order anything that would not be safe for you. And then once you're admitted, the, we'll almost always recommend putting in an IV. This is super important because with an IV being in place, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to have medication through the IV, but it keeps the access available. So if you were to need an emergency medication or um, if we needed to give um, fluids because um, sometimes that can help support the baby, then we have the ability to do that. And then once you're completely admitted, if you are planning on something for pain, either through your IV or an epidural, and I can talk more about um, epidural and pain management in a separate um, video, but if you're planning on that, then we will arrange that or get you something for pain medication. If not, um, you can, um, do what you're planning with breathing techniques. Um, in our hospital and most hospitals, the labor room, once you're admitted, is a private room. So when you first come in through a triage, it may be more like an ER situation with curtains and several people in that larger area. But um, it, it just, and you're just sort of alone in that curtained off area. But once you're admitted, um, you're in your private room with your support person. In our hospital, we allow more than one support person um, and you can have visitors. And we usually monitor baby. Monitoring means monitoring the baby's heart rate and your contractions. We wanna make sure that the baby's heart rate looks nice and healthy and well oxygenated. And we also wanna check those contractions, make sure you're having them and they're continuing, but also make sure that the baby's heart rate doesn't show any signs of distress or concerns when you do um, have those contractions. And sometimes if everything's going well, you don't have any complications and we're not giving you medicine to stimulate your uterus, like if you're not needing Pitocin or anything else, then we sometimes can do intermittent monitoring, which means that we do a short strip. Usually in my hospital, that's about a 20 minute strip out of every hour. And the rest of the time you can um, be off the monitor. Um, either way, we have lots of different positions we can help you get into and move around. You'll see your nurse a little bit more often because usually they have one, only one or two patients. Your doctor may be covering a lot of patients on the labor floor, but you should see them in and out. And then when you get to 10 centimeters, it'll be time to push. That's um, variable time. If it's your first baby, it can take a little while, even up to a couple of hours, but you'll get lots of guidance and encouragement. And the good thing is once you get to pushing, that means you've gotten to the home stretch and you're about to hold that baby. So good luck with everything.